Good morning. Please welcome our alumni, Dr. Robin Boshears Patrick, to sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Generous and loving God, today our hearts are filled with gratitude. Thank you for guiding us to this wondrous commencement day. Thank you for our graduates, family and friends, teachers and mentors who have helped them get to this moment and see that great things are in the reach of those who serve others. We hope their happiness be at least as great as ours on this joyful occasion. Bless all the faculty, administration, and staff at Parker University who have educated our graduates intellectually, spiritually, and physically. Wherever life takes our graduates, please grant them trust in themselves and others, courage to stand up for what is right and just, and empathy and compassion to be a force of light for people in need. Please help them see that dreaming isn't about self-gain, but rather seeing beyond that what limits, harms, and agonizes humankind. In your name we pray, amen. Now, Dr. Jane Michella will provide introductions. Thank you, please be seated. I'm Dr. Jane Michella, Executive Vice President and Provost for Parker University. I'm pleased to welcome everyone today, the graduates, family and friends of the graduates, visitors and guests. We are happy you're here and share in this joyous occasion. Thank you for being with us. Parker University officially opened in September 1982. The charter class graduated in August 1985. Today we are participating in the 101st commencement of Parker University. To date, 7,300 students have graduated. There are 80 graduates in this class, making a total of 7,380 graduates. Also today, Parker University is conferring degrees to those students who have earned a Bachelor of Science with a major in anatomy and or a Bachelor of Science with a major in health and wellness. Let me introduce our platform party. Dr. William Morgan, our president, CEO, Dr. Patrick Bodner, our Associate Provost, College of Chiropractic, Elena, Ms. Elena Mount, our Interim Dean of Student Affairs, Mr. Dr. James W. Parker, Jr., Alumni Board President, Dr. Oliver Smith, our Chairman of the Board of Trustees, and our distinguished speaker, Dr. Rob Rosenbaum, also Board of Trustees member. Thank you for being here. There are members of the Board of Trustees uh, joining us for our celebration today. Please join me in recognizing this group of leaders and thanking them for their service, as well as the First Lady. Thank you for being here. <laughs> it 
It is appropriate and important to recognize a group of dedicated individuals who have given much time and effort to assist in these graduates in achieving their, <clears throat> in achieving their goals and help make this day possible. We at Parker University believe we have the finest faculty and staff of any institution in the world. I would like the faculty and staff to stand to receive acknowledgement for all their efforts. <laughs> Carrying the ceremonial mace in today's commencement program is our faculty senate president, Dr. Mike Raper. Faculty members serving as faculty marshals today are Dr. Ronald Wells and Dr. Jordan L. King. Also, our faculty members who will be assisting in the hooding of the candidates are Dr. Vanessa Morales and Dr. Davis McAllister. Please welcome to the stage our interim, interim Dean of Student Affairs, Ms. Elena Mount. The valedictorian and salutatorian des designations are very special recognitions of American higher education. Salutatorian comes from the Latin root salutatorius, meaning pertaining to visiting or greeting. Beginning in the early 18th century, the salutatorian designated the person giving the welcoming address at a college commencement. In current usage, the salutatorian is an academic title given in the United States and Canada to the second highest graduate based on grade point average of the entire graduating class. While the salutatorian no longer technically delivers the welcoming address, the salutatorian is the first to speak at Parker University's graduation ceremony. The rank of second in the class is one of superior academic achievement. Parker University's salutatorian is a student who has attained a 3.8 grade point average. Please join me in congratulating David Bowman. I'd like to start just by saying thank you. Uh, better zip my thing back up. Um, <laughs> certainly, yeah, it could go on and on because there's a lot of people to thank, but I just, as a general, thank you to everyone. So the last um, few years, I've been ask, asked often uh, why. Why would I choose to become a doctor of chiropractic? And a lot of you guys have asked me this question. So I thought maybe I'd, for once and for all, try to answer as best I can, as I think I have a better understanding of it now. But in uh, 1994, I began my career as a healthcare provider, as an, an occupational therapist. And at the height of my career, um, I was the director of a 53-bed inpatient rehabilitation hospital, a 20-bed skilled nursing facility, two outpatient therapy clinics, and all the therapy services in a level two trauma center hospital. So when people would ask me, why would you want to become a chiropractor, initially I'd I kind of spout off a bunch of statistics. Um, like for instance, did you know that medical errors now represent the third leading cause of death in America? Uh, that our infant mortality rates are the highest of any industrialized nation in the world? That we outspend by significant numbers on healthcare, yet we have the worst outcomes in most measurable categories. We also consume over 80% of the world's manufactured pain medications. And so I'd go on and on, and a lot of my classmates, bless their hearts, they'd be like, you know, Dave, that's really interesting, but um, I've got to go clean my sock drawer. <laughs> so, and for all you parents out there, you have very polite kids. But I've come to realize that um, that, that, that isn't at all why I became a chiropractor. I became a chiropractor because of hope. And in the context of the last few years, I've come to believe two fundamental things. First, each and every one of us were designed. And second, as part of our design, each of us has an innate ability to heal. It's as if that, that latter point was this final signature from the Creator saying, you are woven, I love you, you're beautiful, and you can heal. That's why I became a chiropractor. 
Now I could go on and like, <laughs> we are warriors, you know, or do a Dwight speech or whatever. But I know it, it, you, you won't remember it for one, because <laughs> uh, I've sat through speeches. I don't remember most of them, but yeah, and anyways, but I, I thought I'd tell you a story because I think there's a lot of application to this story uh, to our situation. So of course, I'm speaking primarily to all these guys and girls here. So a long time ago, there was this guy, and his name was Ezekiel, and I'm going to call him Zeke because I only have like three minutes or something left. So, And Zeke was an old school prophet, kind of like Obi-Wan Kenobi, and he was crazy. He would like wail, and he would like, you know, do weird things, like eat, eat scrolls, which were made of sheepskin, so I guess it, was, it really was edible, and yell and all this stuff to try to get his point across, whatever it took. So in this story, this guy named Zeke, he's just hanging out, and all of a sudden, this huge hand comes out of the sky, and the story says that the hand guided him to this valley, and in this valley were a whole bunch of bones, and the story goes on to tell us that the bones were many and they were dry and that Zeke was set down right in the middle of these bones. It was a place of hopelessness. And this, this hand had a voice and the voice said to Zeke, Zeke, you guys, can these bones live? And Zeke said, probably as you or I would say, if like a huge hand came out of the sky and was like... I don't know, but you huge hand guy, you, I think you know. <laughs> and so the, this hand, who identified himself as the Lord, uh, said this to Zeke. He said, Zeke, prophesy over these bones and say to them, the Lord will cause breath to enter you that you may come to life. And Zeke did what he was told based upon what he believed and the dry bones came to life. Now, we're about to enter a valley of dry bones. These bones don't need our negativity. They don't need our arguments about whether Gonstead's better than Diversified versus Thompson versus Activator, you know, whatever it might be. They don't need our arguments about the merits of chiropractic over allopathic. These bone valleys, they need hope. They need someone who believes they can live a belief that there's a designer of each of them and that within each of them is an innate ability to heal. These valleys of dry bones, they need someone like Zeke, someone willing to speak hope to their bones. And that's why I became a chiropractor. The word valedictorian is taken from the Latin root valedicere, meaning to bid farewell. The valedictorian title is historically rooted in the student's traditional role as the final speaker at college graduation ceremony. In current North American usage, the valedictorian is the academic title given to the graduate with the highest cumulative grade point average. And while no longer the final speaker at commencement, the valedictorian is the final student speaker. The rank of first in the graduating class represents the supreme academic achievement at Parker University, an achievement based on sustained effort over several years. Parker's valedictorian completed this challenging course of study with a 4.0 cumulative GPA. Please join me in congratulating Ms. Natalie Ware. January 11th, 2016, I walked into a classroom full of near strangers and wondered what I had gotten myself into. Well, here we are on the day that would never come, and those strangers have become friends and my family and colleagues. Our instructors have become mentors and advocates, and the knowledge that we've worked so hard to attain has become our greatest resource. I love this quote by Howard Thurman. 
Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. And go do that, because what the world needs is people who have come alive. As I'm sure many of you guys have figured out by now in all of your clinicals, I've discovered that we've been placed in a position to give people so much more than pain relief or increased function. I recently had a veteran sitting in front of me at the VA hospital, and he seemed utterly hopeless. He could no longer play with his kids. He struggled to care for his family and for his home. And honestly, he just didn't know why he was in pain. Seeing the look in his eye when I told him that there was a reason for the pain that he was feeling, that it wasn't just in his head as some people had told him before, and that there was hope in sight, that was worth every late night studying. That was worth every stressful test day, every moment of frustration, because I knew looking at that man that I could help him. We've been given a platform, a new medium, if you will, to carry out our purpose, whatever yours may be. For me, chiropractic is an outlet to live and act out my faith, to inspire others and to treat them with dignity, to help people come alive. Chiropractic itself is not the point. It's what we do with it that matters. I'm so humbled to be here today and so grateful for all the people that walked this journey with me. I wanna say thank you to my friends and to my family for always being supportive of my dreams even when they took me so far away. To my fiance, Sean, thank you for encouraging me at every step. I wouldn't be the person that I am today without you. Thank you to all of our instructors and to the faculty for taking the time to care and invest in us as students and as future doctors and colleagues. We appreciate you. And to this class, I'm so thankful to have transformed from students to doctors with you. Let's not squander the knowledge that we've earned and not waste the opportunity that we have. Wake up every morning and help others come alive because that's what the world needs. Thank you. Dr. Oliver Smith, the chairman of the Board of Trustees, will now present the Robert J. Zepeth Service and Leadership Award. Following his presentation, the James W. Parker Philosophy Award, named in honor of our founder, will be presented by our president, Dr. William Morgan. Good morning, all. The Robert J. Suppeth Service and Leadership Award is awarded to a graduating student upon the recommendation of a select committee comprised of faculty, staff, and administrators in recognition of his or her dedication and service that reflects the exemplary service and leadership of Dr. Robert J. Suppeth, who was our chair of the Board of Trustees from 1987 to 2003. Please join me in congratulating this year's recipient David Bowman. Each commit, commencement ceremony, the, JW, the James W. Parker Philosophy Award Committee selects a member of the graduating class to be recognized for the exceptional abilities espousing the philosophy, science, and art of the chiropractic profession, as well as incorporated into his or her professional philosophy, those principles which have become the hallmark of Parker College of Chiropractic. Please join me in congratulating Natalie Rodenzweig.
Now I have a special opportunity to introduce our commencement speaker. And by the way, Natalie, I love what you said. We, we're here to bring people alive. That's just what we do. <laughs> Wrong Natalie, sorry, we have two Natalies. We've got a lot of smart Natalies in this group. Robert E. Rosenbaum, a certified neurosurgeon and medical acupuncturist who volunteers his services at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. Dr. Rosenbaum is well-respected in the profession. He's a frequent speaker on the topics of head injuries, post-operative pain management, steroids and their impact, and integrated care, and is a strong advocate for chiropractic in the healing process. Dr. Rosenbaum has authored and co-authored many articles in a number of healthcare publications. He's a fellow of the American College of Surgeons, the American Association of Neurological Surgeons, and is the past president of the board of directors for Warrior Canine Connection, to name a few. He holds two patents and provides patient advocacy and medical legal support for patients as part of his non-clinical practice. In his distinguished military career, he was surface warfare qualified and awarded medals, ribbons for defense, meritorious service, Navy Marine Corps accommodation, humanitarian service, and Afghanistan campaign, among others. He received his doctorate of medicine at the Medical College of Virginia in Richmond and a BS in industrial organizational psychology at George Mason University, Fairfax. After graduating from Fork Union Military Academy in Fork Union, Virginia. Now, a, a few other things is, is Dr. Rosenbaum is a esteemed colleague of mine. We worked for many years at Bethesda Naval Hospital, later Walter Reed uh, National Ma Naval Medical Center. I know firsthand he is an excellent surgeon, an excellent provider. I hope in your life that you will meet a surgeon as skilled as Dr. Rosenbaum who loves his patients and would do anything for his patients. I also hope that one day you will, you will know a friend as close as Dr. Rosenbaum. Rob, would you come up here and share your commencement? Thank you, Dr. Morgan, Chairman Smith, it is truly an honor to speak to, to this graduating class, particularly at this point in our nation's history. Now, as a disclaimer, when asked to provide this address, I spent some time collecting all the advice I had ever wanted to give anyone in my life. And at about 42 pages established, that was gonna be way too much. So you'll get the abridged version. 43 years ago today, April 14th, something significant happened. U.S. Treasury Department released this, the $2 bill. So this is significant, particularly to our graduating class because Dr. Jim used to give this bill out to the community. And I'm sure all of you and most of the families have heard the stories of Dr. Jim going into the community and giving out nickels, dimes, quarters, graduating to a dollar, and ultimately the $2 bill. Well, the $2 bill is unique, and its uniqueness speaks to the uniqueness of our founder. That uniqueness carries on in this class. You're the 101, you're the 101st graduating class. And as such, you are the next first class of 30 years. Your cohort will look at you as the standard. You'll be utilized as the benchmark for development, for research, for contribution. The university leadership and administration will look back and decide which learning techniques were used that worked and which did not. And in many instances, you will lead change. Now it's interesting, uh, your graduation comes at a time when change is exceedingly necessary. 
the paradigm under which we currently provide health care is in need of great change. Never before in the history of health care has change been so necessary. And I can think of no group of people more appropriately positioned to provide that change. Before we spend the next five or 10 minutes awarding you the documentation of the transfer of information that you have worked so hard to achieve, I'd like us all, and by all I mean everyone in the room, to take just a moment and consider how we arrived here today. Please take a moment and pause with me to consider not just the course under which you took, but the decisions you've made. None of us arrived here by accident. None of us slipped and fell into an airplane. None of us backed into a cab and it carried us here by accident. No one ambled across the state of Texas, ended up here today at this location at this time by mistake or happy accident as we call it on the board. This was all with intention. You arrived here because you worked at it. And by you, again, not just our graduates, but every member of this audience. Each of you have planned, sacrificed, worked, applied yourself, most of you even to your schoolwork. You've, you've endured loss. You've lost family members, loved ones, companions. You've weathered storms like the one today. You've shown resolve. You've duplicated your effort. In some cases, you've doubled down on bad mistakes. You've completed tasks and whether it was for yourself or someone here in attendance today, all of these efforts were contributed, all these efforts are contributing to today's culmination of events. Throughout the process, you have spent, saved, negotiated, you've borrowed, and in some instances, mortgaged parts of your life for today's event. You spent long, nights and even longer days toward the accomplishment of a significant goal. You've built teams, you've garnered support, you've developed coalitions. And through the establishment of these units, from small to large, you've accomplished a mission. Your emotions over the past few years have included joy as in today. There are a few more joyous occasions. But you will also, as you will experience tomorrow, experience jaro, sorrow, the sorrow of leaving your fellow students. You will likely never see this full collection of people again in your life. Other emotions which you have experienced have been disappointment, anger, enlightenment, surprise, excitement, fearfulness. You've even felt disgust and love. But make no mistake, these were not by mistake. These are by design. These are all part of the process. In most cases, the design was by you as the individual, but in some cases, by an administrator, family, loved one, or even a grand architect. Maybe this was by someone who is here today, and maybe by someone who is not. Years ago, in many instances, long, long ago, notwithstanding, years ago, we set out on a trajectory. That trajectory led us here today. Today is a wonderfully joyous occasion. And today's celebration is undertaken with people that we love and for many that we care. Friends, colleagues, students, instructors, mentors, mentees, creditors, debtors. Each of you have lived your lives and there is always someone who has impacted or may impact your life on today's date. Those people made today possible either by motivating you, giving you strength, support, by setting an example or being a standard. The special person has affected you. They've affected who you are. 
And as we leave here today, we each take with us the effect of one another. Of course, it's in varying degrees, but like the butterfly effect, that effect will last for days, months, years, decades. It is my own personal belief that the effect of this class will potentially span a century or more. This can only take place if you take up the challenge to be that person of influence who has impacted your life and provide that impact to others. So you are uniquely positioned. You have the ability to change the world like no others. As you take a small break today, enjoy and celebrate, bask in the light of your accomplishment, not only the accomplishment of our graduates, but that of those who have assisted and supported. Take note of those and remember that those to whom much is given, much is expected. Now go out there and set about loving, providing loving service to your fellow man. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rosemont. Parker University is empowered by the accreditation of the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commissions on Colleges and the State of Texas to award a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in anatomy and a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in health and wellness. On this special day, we recognize these students who have earned their Bachelor of Science degree while working concurrently toward their Doctor of Chiropractic degree. Will the graduates, will the students graduating with these degrees please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Ms. Elena Mount will do the presentation of candidates. Will the graduates please stand? Will those assisting in the conferring of the degrees please take their places? I present to you the graduating class of April 2019. The faculty have determined that each of these students has completed or will soon complete all of the requirements for the degree and the faculty have certified them as being worthy of the title and degree Doctor of Chiropractic with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Some of the candidates have family members who are doctors in one of the healing arts disciplines. It is the tradition at Parker to allow those doctors to participate in this special occasion with the privilege of handing the graduating family member the diploma at the commencement ceremony. Additionally, we have nine graduates that will be receiving honors. Those graduates are awarded as the following. Cum laude with praise, GPAs 3.5 to 3.74, which are indicated with a blue cord. Magna cum laude with great honor, GPAs 3.75 to 3.89, which are indicated with a silver cord. And summa cum laude with highest praise, GPAs 3.9 to 4.0, which are indicated with a gold cord. Will the first row of graduates please come forward? The rest of the graduates please be seated until the marshal directs your row to rise.
presenting our first graduate, Cody Academia, presented by Dr. Lauren Lee, fiance, and Dr. Joseph Ruane, brother. Lorena Acevedo Molina. Mariah K. Adams. Austin Christopher Albison. Adabola Ayeni, graduating cum laude. Talon Thomas Bell. David Bowman, salutatorian, graduating magna cum laude.
William Andrew Brennis, presented by Dr. Richard Shaquin, DC, father-in-law, Dr. Jerry Shaquin, DC, uncle-in-law, Dr. Lynn Shaquin Peterson, DC, aunt-in-law, Dr. Brad Shaquin, DC, uncle-in-law, Dr. John Shaquin, DC, uncle-in-law, Dr. Fernando Cano, DC, uncle-in-law, Dr. Sam Sneed, DC, cousin-in-law, Dr. Shelley Hogan, DC, cousin-in-law, and Dr. Nicole Edwards, DC, cousin-in-law. Brittany Lynn Butler. Jasper Mason Chambers. Casey A. Conran. Marcos R. Cordova, graduating cum laude, presented by uncle Dr. Bradley Walters. Bailey Elizabeth Jane Crawford, presented by her fiance, Dr. Andrew Renault. Cat C. Cunningham.
Richard Elton Davis. Beverly Amanda De La Cruz. Adam Michael Noah DeWitt. Zane B. Dilry, graduating cum laude, presented by his father, Dr. D. Dilry. Demetrius William Elia. Darren Royce English, presented by his father, Dr. Bob English, D.C. Maurice Robert Finley.
Eric Michael Fisher. Robert Paul Franco. James Dylan Fredericks. Kyle Matthew Gardner. Austin Hunter Ham. Justin Dean Headland. Samuel Olgin. Hugh Harrison Hunger.
Victoria Michelle Claire Hutchison. James Oliver Jacques. David Anthony Harakim. Jeremy R. Johnson. Michael Salim Karkar. Nicole C. Cates. Megan Elise Lankford, presented by fiance Dr. Ryan Haley. J.C. Lim.
Sarah M. Linder. Jacob Long. Peter Long. Lisa Lee. Elizabeth Nicole Marrero, graduating cum laude. Adam Eugene Martinez. Kaya Trinice Moncrief. Nathan L. Moon.
Shane Mason Morrison. Amanda McGeehee Murray. Aaron Joseph Murphy, presented by his father, Dr. Timothy Murphy, and his uncle, Dr. Joseph Lawrence. Christian Emmanuel Nelson. Na Tan Win. Rachel Roseanne Palmer. Brittany Aquanese Person. Matthew C. Ramos, presented by Dr. Abel Ramos' cousin.
Brian Rankel. Kelly Reed. Zachary Haas Reidinger, graduating magna cum laude. Robert J. Rogers. Natalie Rosenzweig. Blake B. Roylance. Elizabeth Ann Scott. Dua Zuhair Shihadi.
Sean Keith Small. Kendra Nicole Smith. Nolan Alexander Smith. Ian Kendall Soderquist. Rachel Spicer, graduating magna cum laude. Cameo Stahl. Michael Stevenson. Molly Elizabeth Steens.
Lillian Sue Sunderman. Erin Marie Swanson, graduating magna cum laude. Lakeisha Shanathan Taylor. Shannon Kimberly Thomas. Laura Armida Torres. Kyle David Unruh. Kelly Vonderleith. Natalie Brielle Ware, valedictorian, graduating summa cum laude.
Connor Blaine Yarbrough. Benjamin William Edward Watson, presented by his brother, Dr. Hartman Samuel Ian Watson. our graduating class of April 2019. Any other names? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, graduates, please rise and raise your right hand to repeat the chiropractic oath after me. And additionally, we'd like all doctors of chiropractic who are present to please stand and join us in reaffirming their commitment by reciting the oath with the graduates. I do hereby affirm before God and these assembled witnesses that I will keep this oath and life commitment to hold in esteem and respect those who taught me this chiropractic healing art to follow the methods of treatment which according to my ability and judgment I consider for the highest benefit of my patients to abstain from whatever whatever is deleterious and unethical and to stand ready at all times to serve my fellow man. Without distinction of race, creed, or color. With purity, I will pass my life and practice my art. I will at all times consider the patients under my care to be of supreme importance. I will not spare myself in providing my patients the care. 
I have been taught to give by my alma mater. I will keep inviolate all things revealed to me as a physician. While I continue to faithfully keep this oath. May it be granted to me to enjoy life. And the practice of the chiropractic healing art. Respected by all people at all times. Please welcome back our president, Dr. William Morgan, who will talk about the challenge coins. Thank you, Dr. Bodner. Upon graduation, each of the, the graduates received a challenge coin. And the challenge coin has many meanings. Dr. Rosenbaum gave a challenge earlier. Natalie had a challenge about re revealing and, and releasing life. But the history of the challenge coins goes back to Vietnam and Army Special Forces. And in that unit where they had a very high attrition rate, by attrition I mean a lot of them were killed, um, they developed unit coins that whenever they met together as a unit, they would tap on that coin to ensure that everybody carried the coin in remembrance of, who, of those who went before them and their rigorous training and those who had gone on ahead of them. So my challenge for you is as you carry this coin, to remember Natalie's challenge and Dr. Rosenbaum's challenge, we're here to release life into people. Carry that coin, when you carry this in your pocket as a memento, let it be a reminder of what that means. And certainly, whenever you get together at a Parker event, carry that coin. Because if you don't carry that coin and you hear that knocking now noise, you're buying the round. <laughs> <laughs> the oath and the oath is really important and we all gather together a thousand of us more than a thousand here family, friends your colleagues those who went before you and we, and we put on this ancient garb to commemorate something and to make a ceremony out of this to va we value this a Parker, uh, I won't say a Jim Parker principle, but a, a Parker principle since I've, since I've been here is to honor what is honorable, to elevate what is honorable. You're called to purity, to keep inviolate the things that were shared to you as a doctor. 2,000 years ago, more than, than that, the art of medicine was kind of a nefarious profession. A physician could do anything they wanted to. They could share secrets from a patient. They could take advantage of a woman. They could take advantage of slaves. They could refuse care to people. When Hippocrates created that oath, the oath that protected the patient, that made the patient the center of that contract, that that patient was more valuable than anything else in the doctor's life. Within one century, everyone in the ancient world demanded to have a, a doctor who had taken the oath. That oath changed the face of healthcare. That's why we, we make it such an esteemed and reverent part of this ceremony. Now the fun part. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me as a president of Parker University by the Board of Trustees and the great state of Texas, I hereby confirm upon you the degree of Doctor of Chiropractic and Bachelor of Science with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities hitherto pertaining. You may now move your tassel from the right to the left. <laughs> Welcome, doctors. Ladies and gentlemen, let me please join me in congratulating the 80 newest Doctors of Chiropractic. I would now like to bring up Gene Gigelman to the stage to lead us in the benediction. Dr. Gigelman. I 
I am deeply honored to be here and actually braved wind, rain, and hail to be here today. So yes, we all did. Before I conclude this very, very honored ceremony, let me remind you that we're gonna have a reception in the back. So please join the Parker University community in celebrating the accomplishments of this graduating class. A reception honoring the graduates will take place immediately following this commencement, which is in about, I'm bad, but it may be about an hour from now. And uh, <laughs> sponsored by the American uh, Texas Chiropractic Association. Please meet your graduate for the pictures, refreshments, and continued congratulations from the faculty, staff, and administration. I was referring to praying. You know, we Baptists are long prayers. So if we can conclude this ceremony now, please bow your heads with me. Dear God, our most heavenly Father, thank you for this glorious and happy day. Thank you for those who have come here to this place to celebrate this momentous occasion in the lives of these graduates. Thank you for touching the life of Dr. James W. Parker and providing him with the love, the vision, and the ability required to build this great institution. Thank you for allowing the faculty and staff of this university the opportunity to educate and train these graduates in the science, the philosophy, and the art of chiropractic so that they may make a positive impact on this world one spine at a time. Thank you for Dr. Morgan, Dr. Smith, Dr. Bodner, Dr. Moschella, Dr. Rosenbaum, and the rest of the platform party and the board of trustees for the great leadership they provide for this university. I thank you, Lord, for the time you've given me and the blessings you've bestowed upon my life through the many students I've had the opportunity to teach while I was at Parker. God, please grant each of us peace in our lives, teach us to live together in harmony, and to be forgiving of our fellow human beings. Teach us to love unconditionally, to be nice to each other, and to teach us to please treat everyone with the respect and concern that they deserve and treat them how they want to be treated. God, I ask that you bless each of these graduates, be their guide in all that they do, and teach them to be thankful for the many blessings you bestowed upon their lives. We ask that you continue to watch over and protect our military and first responder personnel who serve this great country and protect our freedom. Now, as we close this ceremony, I ask that you bless each family who is represented here and provide them great passage, excuse me, safe passage back to their homes. I ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Now it's showtime, guys.